All right, this is my DIY vertical plate storage. And I'll show you how to make them. And these are the basic materials that I needed. So I uh, use these Timberlock structural screws um, to mount the two by fours to the wall. I just used a normal two by four. Uh, what I don't have pictured here is the drill press that I used uh, with a inch and a half Forstner bit to make the holes up and down. Then I've got a piece of one and a half inch dowel. You want to be careful when you're selecting this. They're not all that machined that accurately. So bring a tape measure with you to, st to the store to make sure they're an inch and a half. I had some that were under each and a half and it made them fit real loose inside the, um, inside the holes we made. And then you just need inch and a half PVC. So the first set that I made, I used regular Schedule 40 white PVC. And that's fine if you're gonna use PVC and you want it white, I think that's what you should use. My next iteration, I wanted them to be black, so I found this. First learned that painting, it's not really a great option. This is, I think, called ABS. It's a little weird. I cut it, and you can see it's not quite round. It doesn't hold its shape as well, and the finish isn't quite as slippery, so it's harder to get the plates on and off. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. I ended up buying, through Home Depot, furniture grade PVC. And I think this is the way to go if you're gonna do any colors. You can actually get this stuff in any uh, color that you want. So if you were gonna do anything other than white, that's probably what you can do. If you do use PVC, you can take off the lettering with just some acetone. This ABS also had lettering. I took it off with acetone, but you can see it's just not quite ni as nice of a finish. So the first thing I did before I put these up, because I don't have drywall, is I you can see here, I doubled up all the studs. One, it's gonna give me a lot more support as far as hanging all this weight and this rack off the wall. But it also just gives me more of a flat surface to put the two by four sideways and be able to mount it. As you can see here with the timber locks that I used to mount that. best way to plan these things out is just take your 2x4 before you drill the holes and just lay your plates on there, center them, draw a line there, line there, mark your middle where you're going to drill your holes. Uh, you don't need to use a drill press, you can use a hole, a one and a half inch hole saw. You just have to have a very steady hand to make sure it doesn't get bored out too large, otherwise your dowels are going to fit too loosely. But lay these out and just lay your next one out something like that obviously board would be longer that way you can just get all your spacing correctly done so when we drilled the holes the inch and a half holes to fit the inch and a half dowel uh, one thing you might want to do that i did was i put a shim underneath so these aren't exactly 90 degrees actually or to the two by four. I actually added about a, a two degree incline to them because wood's gonna bow a little bit. And I just didn't want a situation where these were bowing and the weights were uh, slipping off when I was using them. So if you put a couple paint sticks or something uh, underneath one end of the drill press platform, it'll give you that one to two degree uh, incline so that the weights just have no chance of slipping off, especially if you're gonna stick a couple of 45s on them. Here's an example of what I mean as far as shimming the end. So picture you got a drill press here that go through this hole and if you just and it was on the platform, I would just take a piece of wood like that, get some ground clearance just to create a little bit of an angle. So when you drive the hole down through, it's gonna be at a slight angle. You can't quite see it in here, but this is actually at a slight increased angle. Once you get the dowels cut to length, you're going to want to cut them obviously an inch and a half longer um, than you want to be sticking out because that's how thick the board is. Um, and then you can take the part that's going to go in the board and just give it a little 
uh, sanding to help it fit in there. You want it just a fairly snug, um, but enough room to put some glue in there and just wood glue them in there and it'll set pretty quick. And those aren't, those aren't going anywhere. I just used a um, miter saw to cut the PVC to length. It makes a horrible mess. So you probably want to put down something to catch it so you can sweep it up afterwards. The, PV, the inch and a half PVC fits a little loose on the inch and a half dowel. So I'm going to need to wrap the dowel by my count at least with this electrical tape two three it'll be about five and a half times four five and a half and when I put that back on just going to take the play out of it a little bit. So now when I put the plates on and off it won't pull off. And so there you have it. So this is the finished product. So I've got you can cut these to any length. That's what's the nice thing. Don't get too cute and cut them too short. I didn't like the way this one fits. So that's why the, the uh, PVC is a little bit longer. Uh, you want to leave a little bit of spare. I've got, I've got room to have the bumper in a 45, two 45s here, my 25s, my 10s, my 5s, and my 2.5s. My back order plates from Titan never get here. I'll be able to uh, get those up on the wall. Even made little ones for my collars up top. So. Overall, they're sturdy. I don't think they're going anywhere, so you can hold quite a bit of weight. But I definitely recommend doubling up uh, those 2x4s underneath those studs.